the second session. The second topic is medical management of ectopic pregnancy, the recent advantages. The chairpersons for this session are Dr. Ila Gupta, ma'am. She's a senior consultant at Cloud9 Hospital and a graduate and postgraduate from KGMC Lucknow. She's been practicing in East Delhi for more than 30 years. She's a founder member and past president of Daily Gaini Forum East, vice president and editor of uh, IMA East Delhi branch. Uh, she has received various awards with special high risk, uh, interest in high risk pregnancy. Uh, then we have Dr. Vanna Gupta, ma'am. She is a senior consultant at Max Hospital, Patbarganj, RK Hospital, Apex City Hospital. She has been the past secretary of the president of the, of the forum and she is right now the vice president. She has also received many awards. Uh, then we have Dr. Deepa Gupta. She is a senior consultant and gynecologist and director of Muskan Clinic. She is a member of MTP Committee, Government of Delhi, East Delhi, Honorary Finance Secretary, IMA East Delhi Branch, member MTP Committee, for and many other committees. And the talk will be given by Dr. Minakshi Sharma. She is an alumni of uh, All India Institute of Medical Sciences. She is the secretary of our forum and she has received various other prizes. Uh, welcome, Dr. Minakshi. I think you can start the presentation. Yes, thank you, Dr. Seema. And uh, I'll just take a minute uh, to start sharing my screen. And just let me know when it is visible. I've started sharing. Is it visible? Yes, it is. Yes, Dr. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Thank you, ma'am, uh, for giving me the opportunity to speak about the topic pregnancy in the recent updates. We ha I've taken my presentation from the two main documents, which are NICE guidelines in 2019 which is an ectopic pregnancy and miscarriage diagnosis and the initial management, and an ACOG practice bulletin, which was uh, published in 2018. These are the recent uh, documents which are available in the public domain, and my whole presentation is based on these recent guidelines. So as we all know that ectopic pregnancy constitutes about 2% of all pregnancies, and the prevalence rates vary uh, and uh, are roughly about 11 per thousand of pregnancies. 18% of the women presenting in the first trimester with pain or bleeding have ectopic pregnancy. So any woman who has pain and bleeding should be thoroughly investigated for ectopic pregnancy. And it contributes to the maternal mortality to the tune of 0.2 per 1,000 estimated ectopic pregnancies. Ruptured ectopic pregnancy accounts for about 2.7% of maternal mortality. Two-thirds of the deaths are due to substandard care. And women who have, don't have an access to the healthcare are especially vulnerable. As we all know, that 95% of the ectopic pregnancies are tubal pregnancies, and the rest are intramural or cervical scar pregnancies or ovarian pregnancies. And the rate of recurrence in the subsequent pregnancies, if the person has one ectopic in the uh, uh, previous pregnancy, the chance of recurrence in the subsequent pregnancy is about 10%. And after two or more ectopic, the rate of recurrence increases to uh, about more than 25%. But there are risk factors of ectopic pregnancy, which we all uh, know, and there are previous damage to the fallopian tubes due to infection, uh, whether it is secondary to ascending pelvic infection or a prior fallopian tube surgery, or pregnancies with IUCD in situ. With IUCD, uh, the pregnancies as such are prevented, and the risk of uh, ectopic pregnancy is also low as compared to the general population. But if a person has IUCD in situ, and gets pregnancy, then the chances of her having a tubal pregnancy is much, much higher than having an intrauterine pregnancy. So any patient who has an IOCD in C2 comes with UPT positive should be thoroughly investigated for ectopic pregnancy. And after ART, tubal factor infertility and multiple embryo transfer are other reasons for ectopic pregnancies. So how to diagnose ectopic pregnancy? The, basically, the main modality, TBS is the gold standard, where we see an admixal mass, especially with the gestation sac in Ednixa, with a yolk sac, with or without fetal pole, and a free floating pouch of Douglas, especially if they structured ectopic. These are hallmark of an ectopic pregnancy. Ednixal mass with a hypoechoic area, which is separate from the ovary, has a positive predictive value of 80%. Definitive intrauterine pregnancy, if it is seen, like an intrauterine gestation sac with yolk sac, rules out ectopic in most uh, cases, except some rare cases of heterotopic pregnancy. Serum beta CG above a discriminatory level without an intrauterine pregnancy also points towards an ectopic pregnancy. So this is a nice uh, uh, 2019 basically uh, pathway which has been published. 
it uh, it's a very interactive pathway i just uh, shown a picture uh so you can uh, just click on the metal trick set and see the about the management tech, uh, and the expectant management and surgery it's an interactive pathway it is available in the public domain anyone can have this so first of all expectant management uh, according to the recent nice guidelines have been brought as an uh, available modality of management in a very selected uh, subgroup of patients with ectopic pregnancy so expectant management can be offered to the patients who are clinically stable who are pain free and they have a tubal ectopic pregnancy which is less than 35 mm with no visible heartbeat on transvaginal scan and a serum beta hcg of less than 1000 international units or even less are able to return for follow up these patients these subset of patients can be offered expectant management and expectant management can also be considered in women who are also stable and pain free but have a beta hcg above 1000 but less than 1500 uh, international units and they are able to return for follow up so uh, if a patient decides to go for an expectant management repeat hcg levels on day 2 4 and 7 after the original test should be done if the hcg levels drops by 15% or more from the previous values on day 2 4 and 7 then repeat beta hcg until a negative result is obtained this points towards spontaneous resolution of ectopic pregnancies which do occur in uh, patients who present with very low beta hcg levels if hcg levels do not fall by 15% or stay the same or rise from the previous value we should review the women's condition and seek uh, further advice regarding the management whether it's a medical management or a surgical management accordingly so expecting versus the medical management of pregnancy they have seen that there seems to be no difference following an expectant or a medical management based on the limited evidence in the sub, uh, uh, subset of the patients who are uh, eligible for expectant management so rate of ectopic pregnancy ending naturally the risk of tubal rupture was seen in the both the subset of the groups and the need for additional treatment uh, that they might need to be admitted urgently if the condition deteriorates remains the same and health uh, status depression or anxiety scores also remains the same in both the group of the patients so uh, when should we offer medical or a surgical management for ectopic pregnancy so systemic uh, methotrexate or the met, uh, medical management is offered to women who have no significant pain tubal uh, uh, ectopic which is adnexal mass less than 35 mm with no visible heartbeat hcg levels is less than 1500 and do not have an intrauterine pregnancy confirmed on ultrasound scan and are able to return for follow up so these patients can be offered systemic methotrexate as a first line treatment and offer the surgical treatment when patient is not willing to come for follow up and uh, to uh, as a surgery as a first line of management in ectopic pregnancy should be offered to patients who have an ectopic pregnancy and significant pain who have an ectopic pregnancy with an adnexal mass mass which is larger than 35 mm or an ectopic pregnancy with a fetal heartbeat the live ectopic on an ultrasound scan or a ectopic pregnancy with a beta hcg values above 5000 so those patients surgery is the first line management uh, option for these patients so there are conditions where both medical and surgical management can be offered to the patient and we need to really sit with the patient and counsel that which uh, method she wants to opt for so offer the choice if the beta hcg is between 1500 and 5000 international units per liter who are able to return for follow up and who have no significant pain adnexal mass less than 35 mm and no intrauterine pregnancy as confirmed by the ultrasound scan so advise the women to choose whether with the that the chance of needing further intervention is increased and they may need to be urgently admitted if their condition deteriorates only then the patient should be offered a medical treatment if she is willing to report to hospital in emergency at a sh uh, short interval so this is the table which i created just to simplify when an expectant management is offered when a medical management is primarily offered when both medical and surgical options are the treatment of choice and when the surgical is the primary mode of choice like pain if pain is significant surgery is the one if adnexal mass is above 35 mm surgical treatment has to be offered if an hcg is above 5000 surgery has to be offered but if there is no pain and initial mass is small and an hcg is between 1500 to 5000 you can offer both medical and surgical 
and the fetal heart activity has to be absent if you're offering a medical treatment. So this is a very simple chart which I had uh, just uh, 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 basically find out about uh, about the whatever is there in the nice guidelines, and it's for easy reference. And and I can uh, share the screenshot of this in the group as well. So what are the contraindications for medical treatment? We all know, but just to reiterate, absolute contraindications are having a live intrauterine pregnancy, evidence of immunodeficiency, moderate to severe anemia, leukopenia, or thrombocytopenia, as methotrexate causes uh, bone marrow suppression. Sensitivity to methotrexate. If a person is susceptible, has a sensitivity to methotrexate, those patients should not be offered a systemic treatment. They have an active pulmonary disease because it can cause pneumonitis. Active peptic ulcer disease because methotrexate is known to cause gastritis. Clinically uh, important hepatic dysfunction or renal dysfunction and methotrexate is not the treatment of choice. Breastfeeding or this rupture ectopic pregnancy where surgery has to be offered and a hemodynamically unstable patient where surgery is the modality of choice. The relative contraindications, however, are embryonic activity detected by uh, transvaginal uh, ultrasonography, high initial beta CG of more than 5,000, ectopic pregnancy and lethal mass more than 4 centimeters, refusal to accept blood transfusion, and inability to participate in the follow up. So, the medical management for women with ectopic pregnancy who have had methotrexate. So, we take Two serum beta SCG measurements in the first week on day four and day seven after treatment, and then the one serum beta SCG every week until a negative uh, SCG is obtained. If the SCG levels plateau or rise, then we have to reassess for further treatment. There are various regimens available. There's a single dose regimen, there is a two dose regimen, there's a multi dose regimen. So I'll just be highlighting all the regimens one by one. First one is a single dose regimen where a 50 milligram per meter square of methotrexate is given on day one intramuscularly and SCG is to be measured on post-treatment day four and day seven. Uh, the dose is 50 milligram per meter square. Meter square is the body surface area where we have to calculate. It varies from 1.2 to maximum 2. So the dose may vary between 50 to 100 milligram. Maximum is 100 milligram depending on the body surface area of the patient. There are body surface area calculators which are easily available on the net. You can just see it on the Google. And uh, we have post treatment, we have to measure SCG levels on day four and day seven. So if the decrease is greater than 15%, then we have to just follow with weekly beta SCG. If the decrease is less than 15%, then a second dose of 50 mg per meter square can be administered. If the SCG does not decrease after two doses, then consider a surgical management. If HCG plateaus or increase during the follow-up, then consider administering a methotrexate for the treatment of persistent ectopic pregnancy. So this is a single dose regimen. Then there comes a two-dose regimen, which is sort of a midway between a, a single dose and a multi-dose regimen. So here administer methotrexate on day one, 50 mg per meter square. This is also based on body surface area intramuscularly. Day one you give and administer second dose on day four. Beta SCG is to be measured between day 4 and day 7. If the decrease is greater than 15%, then SCG is to be uh, uh, offered on a follow-up on a weekly basis. If the decrease is less than 15%, de-administer methotrexate 50 mg uh, per meter square body surface area intramuscularly on day 7. Check SCG on 11. If there is no fall, then you can give a fourth dose on day 11. And uh, if... Uh, even after four doses, there is no fall in beta SCG, then have to go for a surgical management. This was a two dose regimen. Multi dose regimen is a little different. It is a dose regimen which is similar to the treatment which we used to do in gestational trophoblastic disease. So, here, methotrexate is given in 1 mg per kg. So, if a 60 kg patient presents with a topic, then you give a 60 milligram of methotrexate. So, 1 mg per kg, give I am on day 1, 3, 5, and 7. And we have to alternate with folinic acid, 0.1 mg per kg, intramuscularly on days 2, 4, 6, and 8. And we measure HCG on methotrexate dose and continue until HCG has decreased by 15% from the previous measurements. If the decrease is greater than 15%, then discontinue administration of methotrexate and measure HCG weekly. If the SCG does not decrease after four doses, consider surgical management. 
FSH level plateaus or increases during the follow-up, then it's a persistent ectopic pregnancy, and we administer methotrexate. <coughs> Sorry. Methotrexate regimen to which one to choose? There is no clear consensus that which is the optimal methotrexate regimen for the patients with ectopic pregnancy. Single dose protocol may be most appropriate for patients who have relatively low initial SCG levels or a plateau in SCG levels. Two dose regimen may be considered as an alternative to a single dose regimen, especially in women with the initial higher beta SCG values. Single dose versus multi dose, there was a meta analysis of observational studies which showed that multiple dose regimen is statistically more effective and single dose is associated with decreased risk of adverse effect. So multiple dose is more effective, but adverse effects are more. So we have to uh, weigh the balance. In the recent systemic uh, review of uh, RCT was done in uh, Cochrane in, uh, in Biomedic uh, Online in 2017, and they found similar rates of successful resolution between a single dose and a multi-dose regimen, and increased risk of adverse effects with the multiple dose protocols. So what about single dose versus two dose? So there were three RCTs which was carried out. Similar rates of successful resolution for two dose and single dose protocols, and there were comparable risk of adverse effects. In two of these RCTs, there was a trend towards two dose having a higher success rate, especially if HCG was more than 3,500 international units. So two dose was found to be exactly better than the single dose when the HCG uh, values were higher. So uh, methotrexate management for topic pregnancy, we must uh, counsel the patients that she has to avoid intercourse until HCG comes undetectable. Avoid the pelvic examinations and ultrasound during surveillance of methotrexate therapy. Avoid sun exposure to limit the risk of methotrexate dermatitis. And food and vitamins, especially containing folic acid, should be avoided. Avoid gas-forming foods because they produce pain and leak uh, conception should be avoided at all costs until the HCG is Unremarkable. So, what are the predictors? How can we say that this patient is likely to fail on the methotrexate treatment? So, if there is a life ectopic, higher chances of methotrexate failure. That's why the guideline says if there is a life ectopic, then you should go for a surgical management instead. Size and volume of the gestation sac. If it is more than 4 centimeters, higher chances of medical management to fail. If there is a high initial SCG concentration, especially more than 5,000, Higher chances of the patient uh, fails on methotrexate treatment and will require a surgical management. If there is a presence of free peritoneal blood, that means it's a hemoperitoneum, obviously you need to intervene urgently. Rapidly increasing HCG concentration, the rise is more than 50% in uh, 48 hours before the methotrexate treatment. Or a continued rapid rise in HCG concentration during methotrexate, there are chances who are going to fail on medical management. So failure rate with if the beta CG is high, more than 5,000, it is almost 14.3%, compared to 3.7% if it is less than 5,000. The treatment-related effects are this. They be slightly increased in abdominal girth. They can be increased in LCG during the initial therapy. So day one and four, there can be slight rise of the LCG, but day four and day seven, they should fall. Vaginal bleeding or spotting can be there, and abdominal pain can be there which uh, confuses one person uh, whether the patient is going to rupture or not. We need to do a scan sometimes. Uh, other side effects of methotrexate, as I've already told initially, it's a gastric distress, nausea, vomiting, stomatitis, dizziness, severe neutropenia, reversible alopecia, and pneumonitis can also occur. Surgical management of topic pregnancy, laparoscopy is always preferable to laparotomy in hemodynamically stable patient, provided skill is there and equipments are available. Tubal ectopic pregnancy in an unstable patient is a medical emergency that requires prompt surgical intervention. So what should we do? Self-injectomy or self-ingostomy? So uh, NICE guidelines 2012 says that the offer a self-injectomy to women who is undergoing surgery for ectopic unless they have other risk factors for infertility. So if the other tube is completely normal, then we go ahead and do a self-injectomy. Advise women who have had a self-injectomy that they should take a UPT after three weeks to check for the beta CG levels and advise the woman to return if the UPT is positive. So consider sulfingostomy as an alternative to sulfingectomy for women with risk factors for infertility such as contralateral tube damage. If the other tube is damaged, then sulfingostomy can be offered. One in five women who undergoes, uh, undergoes a sulfingostomy need further treatment with methotrexate for persistent ectopic. 
serum SCG measurement at seven days after surgery, and then one serum uh, SCG measurement every week until negative result is obtained, should be done in patients where we are doing the salpingostomy instead of salpingectomy. So medical versus surgical, they have RCT comparing the medical versus surgical treatment uh, with lab salpingostomy. They have shown that lower success rate for single dose uh, for success and similar success rate but longer surveillance with medical management. There was no difference in overall tube uh, preservation, tubal pregnancy, or a repeat ectopic pregnancy or future pregnancies in the, both the groups, medical as well as a lab salpingostomy. So to conclude, both conservative surgery and medical therapy may be viewed as appropriate first-line therapies in many early unruptured ectopic pregnancies. Multiple dose methotrexate treatment has a lower failure rate than a single dose methotrexate. Single dose methotrexate is sufficient to treat persistent trophoblastic tissue after salpingostomy and ectopic pregnancies associated with low initial HCG values. Post-operative prophylactic single dose methotrexate may reduce the incidence of persistent ectopic after salpingostomy. Medical therapy offers more cost-effective than surgery, except when the initial beta HCG level is high or when embryonic cardiac activity is observed in the ectopic pregnancy. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Very Minas. nice. Very nice, Dr. Minakshi. Thank you, ma'am. Uh, it is just, uh, just a comment that uh, uh, in cases where there is an interstitial pregnancy, although the patient presents with pain, if it is an early one, and if the levels are within our acceptable limits, that less than 1500 or or uh, the obviously the sac diameter would never cross 35 mm, we can still go in for uh, medical management in such cases, although the pain is severe. And uh, what about ovarian or cervical pregnancies? Maybe it's the same. Cervical would again be more painful, I think. And But then we have to be very that... Uh, the levels have to be seen. The sac diameter has to be observed. So Guidelines mainly mainly cover the tubal ectopic pregnancies and cervical yeah. and others. Basically, we have to go more by the clinical uh, assumption rather than a. No, yeah. no, that's right. But then the guidelines would cover the same way. That uh, yes, if, because indeed. if we are not touching the cervix and not touching the ovary, and the patient is getting medically managed, things would definitely be better for her. So with the recent NICE guidelines, basically expected management uh, is the one thing which has come up as a uh, treatment up. modality. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Where, uh, which was not there. Is very yeah. low. He was scared. Yeah, yeah. Which was not there. They are saying that uh, the, the expectant management is more because they are being diagnosed more because we have ultrasound scans. Initially, these patients were resolving on their own and we never knew. Yes. We never knew if they were ever pregnant or not. That is the reason why they say that we can go in for an expectant management. If it is a very early or a small pregnancy with no cardiac activity, less than 1,000 uh, units of uh, HCG, beta HCG. Yeah. They have to be yeah. a close follow-up. Dr. Ila and Dr. Deepa? Yes, ma'am. Ila, ma'am, aap unmute Ila, ma un Unmute yourself, Dr. Ila. Okay, okay. okay. Uh, I mean, actually, it was a great presentation because you have really given tips of everything. And you made a very good chart and you really depicted it so well that it is very easy to understand. That's wonderful. And I would like to suggest that methotrexate treatment, though it is very good, but you should never hurry to give it. You First of all, you have to be very, very sure that it is an ectopic pregnancy, only then give. Because there is uh, when there is PUL pregnancy of unknown localization, sometimes it is really distressing period that we do not know whether it is ectopic or it is going to be an intrauterine pregnancy. So you have to really keep uh, fingers crossed and give methotrexate only when you are very sure that there is a adenexal mass which is really seen or there is no intrauterine pregnancy or there is a whatever sac is seen, it is a pseudo sac. And once you are very, very clear, only then you should give methotrexate. And secondly, because failure rate is to the tune of 20 to 30%, so it becomes very important to have a very good follow-up. If you uh, do not do a follow-up, then it is of no use. As Meenakshi already said that patient who comes wants to come 
back for the follow up only then you give a methotrexate and patient should remain in, under your supervision always and you can keep calling her on and on and keep reviewing with the ultrasound and hcg hcg of course is uh, one fourth and seventh day you are doing it and in many patients have seen that it initially it rises and it is seen that when it rises there are more chances of failure but still there are few patients who can easily uh, uh, who can still have a success rate uh, when you give methotrexate so medical management is very good and i believe that we should be very very expert and very comfortable treating patient of a topic with this management and expect in management as vanna said it is of course it is has got the similar result as medical management but the beta hcg level is the uh, real denominator which will tell you whether you have to go for expectant management or you have to go the for the methotrexate management so thank you very much minakshi it was a very good presentation thank you very right thank you very rightly said uh, ina ma'am the proper follow up of such patients is very important and we need to have a pre procedure checklist also proper counseling of the patient we have to take a consent and we need to do some blood test also like cbc lft kft and beta hcg of course for such patients and uh, i think the key to the success of medical management is early diagnosis uh, as the it should fill our criteria and then only we should go for a uh, medical ma management or expectant management dr menakshi many many congratulations for such a wonderful presentation I just want to Thank ask you. you one thing: How does methotrexate treatment affect the subsequent fertility in such patients? Methotrexate uh, usually does not affect the subsequent fertility at all. But if a patient conceives soon, within a month, then there can be a teratogenic effect. So that's why it is very very important that uh, one month HCG uh, should be followed, and patient should avoid conception at all cost. Another thing I want to highlight that whenever we are doing a multiple dose regimen. If we are repeating a methotrexate within 48 hours, folinic acid should be alternate, given alternately on day two, uh, four, six, and eight. That is very very important. Otherwise, there will be a severe uh, pancytopenia, bone marrow suppression, which will adversely affect the patient out. So this is very important. If you are go going for a uh, two dose regimen, if you are giving it after 72 hours, then folinic acid is not required. But if you are giving it every uh, alternate day, then the folinic acid uh, also need to be given. Another thing, whenever we are giving a methotrexate, single dose, two dose, or multi dose, we should be highlighting that we should not be giving any iron or multivitamin tablets which has folic acid because that will decrease the efficacy. Patient have a habit of taking multivitamins, iron along with the treatment, and when they are on methotrexate treatment, they should not be giving a folic acid. We should not be taking it to decrease the efficacy of the methotrexate. Because most of the patients who are on the fertility treatment must be taking folic acid. So you have that to be specifically tell them that please don't take folic acid while you are being given methotrexate. And Doctor, thank you for asking. Yes. Madam, uh, two points I would like to say. Is first of all, should we admit and give these patients, or can we give it as an OPT procedure? Okay. So we do not know when it's actually going to rupture because fifteen percent, despite your medical management, can rupture. So keeping a patient for four days, five days, seven days, it's not acceptable. Not acceptable. Only those patients to be admitted who cannot come for, to you for a follow up, and they should know that the admission is going to be for a longer period, not for a day that you give an injection and you send them off next to. Then it should be a good admission for seven days that you're doing. Otherwise, rest of them, if we have given them a telephone number if we have explained to them what the cause when they need to reach the hospital fast if they are living nearby then give it as a opd management we do not need to admit these patients second thing is about the follow up of these patients we need to do beta hcg repeatedly till it's negative you cannot say girra girra chalo theek hai you have to bring it out to negative third thing second thing is follow up do not do by ultrasounds because people tend to do that nexal mass follow up nahi abhi bhi nexal mass hai it is done because nexal mass will take a long time for it to resolve so we should not use repeated ultrasounds just to see and then advise a patient that nahi you can go ahead for a surgery over that particular one and third thing i know it's not in the guidelines but uh, my clinical um, two or three cases i have seen that we've given the first dose then we have given the second dose also that's after a week it's not a very high beta hcg but still we find that the beta hcg is not coming down 
I have tried using Mifepristone 200 milligrams twice a day for three days, and I have found that after that fast, the HCG tends to fall down very fast. First patient, I thought it was by chance. Then I repeated it in another patient, and I found that the response was good. Although it's not in any of the guidelines, it's not been talked about. But that is something. If anyone has any personal experience, on but that, that would, wouldn't that scare you that in case if there is a bleed or something, and no, then we are necessarily mm, pushing the patient. I'm not talking about ones which are very high beta HCG. I'm talking where the beta HCG has come down, but the decrease is less than fifteen percent. So over those particular patients, I'm not talking of anything above three thousand. Anything above three thousand, you have to be very careful. That's my ma'am. Uh, uh, with this bit of text, <clears throat> I would uh, comment that uh, regarding the hospitalization, uh, when we started this using methotrexate in the institute uh, uh, two decades back, then what we were doing, we were admitting all patients who were on medical management. But that time, it was very very new. And uh, we have, but in instead we were giving an IV methotrexate instead of an IM methotrexate IM. because we have mm -hmm. seen in some of the studies that IV was worked better than IM at that time. But now the study says the same. IM is in all guidelines and it's uh, domiciliary treatment, not an inpatient treatment. So IM route obviously is preferred. But at that time when we were giving an intravenous uh, methotrexate and we were admitting all ectopic patients, we found out that only the, the patients who had an initial beta CG of more than thousand who had a live ectopic. Uh, pregnancy who had an index margin was more than four centimeters they were the candidates who were likely to have some severe pain and ultimately they rupture and they need to be opened up uh, and go for a surgical management patients who were less than 3000 beta cg and usually those who are willing to follow up we started moving them through a domiciliary treatment and have found to be very very useful so since then we were giving a domiciliary treatment for these patients but we have to counsel the patient if we feel the patient is not going to turn for follow up then better to go for a surgical procedure Madam, Madam, yeah. I, I think Dr. Binakshi, uh, this uh, review had been absolutely uh, desirable at this particular stage. Whenever we start a new treatment, you will find uh, initially uh, the people who started it do not detail about the dosage, do not uh, uh, detail about anything. They hide it and, you know, people just try permutation. I mean, actually, use it. So I think, you know, timely the review has come that, you know, people, there is there is a medical treatment, very distinct guideline. And I think the surgical treatment, very distinctly, it has been highlighted that whenever you find that levels are more than 5,000, the sac size is more than 3.5 uh, centimeter. And whenever it is a live fetus, please do not go for conservative treatment. Like, uh, as Dr. Jyoti Agarwal always says, if the fetal heart activity has come, terminating for a medical abortion becomes difficult. The similar way th things come here. So I think uh, your chart, everybody should keep it uh, with them uh, in their this thing. So every time, you know, if these four criteria, their patient goes straight away and pain, you said, they straight away goes for a surgical line of treatment. Now, uh, here I just uh, wish to tell you on two things you said. Salpingostomy as a procedure is not accepted even by infertility expert because this is an invitation for another ectopic pregnancy. You also said in case, you know, sometime a ectopic nickel gay dubara score abne salpingostomy kari because she is not ready to give the signature for salpingectomy. In that particular patient, you very clearly highlighted these patients should be supplemented with injection method said, and they should have a beta hcg level done three weeks later first and then subsequently it should be done i've recently had uh, two cases one from canada coming and another came, coming from uh, usa if one was followed a normal abortion and another followed an ectopic pregnancy that the levels came down initially and then after four or five uh, five six weeks you know they started going up and they went almost to the thousand level and then they started getting worried about the similar way as we we take little time to kiss to, to start a chemotherapy not to start a chemotherapy so they come down and i'm telling you that we used in both the cases one single switching that is method 50 milligram had been used on a day one three uh, five and seven and the folinic acid had been given in between and then you start following them once you have completed the therapy you start following them then aapko आपको बताना पड़ेगा कि आपके ओरल असर आ जाएंगे आपकी ल्यूकोपेनिया हो जाएगा आपका ल्यूकोसाइड काउंट कम हो जाएगा ये सब काम हो जाएगा एंड दैट टाइम व्हेन यू टेकिंग टेल टेलिंग अबाउट द नो एडिशनल थिंग शुड बी टेकन वेयर फोलिक एसिड देयर गिवन डाइट यू हैव टू एडवाइस 
that please do not take uh, that particular thing which has rich in folic acid, you should not be taking because again, the effect of the methotrexate will not be seen. But I, I think, you know, your presentation absolutely great. And I think a timely, nice review has come that, you know, they have combined all the therapy and that's why there are three RCTs have been there uh, to see whatever the studies people have done, you know, they have tried to group it up uh, together. But the bottom line you said, that the treatment of medical treatment or surgical treatment as far as recurrence rate is concerned, as far as success rate is concerned, is the same. Whether you use a single uh, dose therapy, whether you do double dose therapy or you do the multiple dose therapy, it is the same, provided you take weight into consideration. So this is uh, what we should do, that uh, we should not really jump for multiple dose and things like that. If you're if you're sticking initially to the criteria is aapne hcg level dekh liya aapne pain dekh liya aapne fetal heart sound dekh liya aapne wo categorized surgery wale nikal diye to aapko kabhi bhi problems nahi hongi i i think you know and the counseling is very important and uh, coming to the last question of uh, what dr uh, jyoti bhaskar says i use a medical treatment i use a uh, methotrexate i always give me fibrosto एक टैबलेट जरूर दूंगी मैं इसको ये मेरे सामने खाओ और फिर इसके बाद में इंजेक्शन लगाऊंगी डॉक्टर इट मेक्स सेंस मिथोन आप हम जब सिंपली काउंसलिंग करते हैं मेडिकल अबॉर्शन की ये जीरो आवर में जो टैबलेट देती है उसका काम है लाइव टिश्यू को डेड करना मिजोप्रिस्टॉल का काम है उस लाइव टिश्यू को एक्सपेल करना इट मेक सेंस एंड दैट्स अ रीजन दैट पीपल लाइक मी यूज Right before the, the first dose of methotrexate is given, we are using it. Yes. Okay. Yes. 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 मैडम एक बात बिल्कुल क्लियर आपको मिफी प्रिस्टोन का क्या काम है मिफी प्रिस्टोन का काम है कि आपको जो भी लाइव टिश्यू है उसको डेड कर और मिजो प्रिस्टोल का काम इसको एक्सपेल करना सो दिस इज द वे आई मतलब दिस इज यू यू फाइंड एंड ऑफ द पीपल स्टार्ट यूजिंग एंड देन द कॉम्बिनेशन विल कम लाइक दिस I, I think it had been a great review both the presentation had been absolutely marvelous and anything was to make any comment Ma'am, for the previous presentation by Dr. Renu Chawla, I just wanted to know that uh, in that guidelines, it was said that the mefepristone is not required when we give in the missed abortion. So, but because uh, because okay, but I know, I know, but because the mesoprostol sensitivity increases great when we give mefepristone. So results of uh, success is better with the mifepristone and mesoprostol. La, you okay, can within the guidelines you can manipulate because you know it is a safe drug. But ye jo guidelines aye hai, ye jo ye wali baat hai, hai wo bhi pehla wali bhi nice ki guideline hai. Wo bhi nice ki guideline hai jo uh, Dr. Renu Chawla ne present kari hai. But you can definitely. I also use in Mr. Boshan also. I use. I I don't give a gap. नहीं तो होता है कि आपने जीरो आवर में दिया फिर फोर्टी एट आवर्स के बाद आप मिजोप्रिस्टॉल देंगे इसमें हम मिफी प्रिस्टॉल भी देते हैं और मिजोप्रिस्टॉल भी साथ दे देते हैं क्लियर चमचे होते जो उनको बताते हैं कि जी इस चीज के लिए ये चीज है हमारा ये एक्सपीरियंस कहता है हमारा ये एक्सपीरियंस कहता है हमारा ये एक्सपीरियंस तब वो जाके स्पीकर जाकर बोलता है कि दिस इज अवर एक्सपीरियंसेस तो उसके अंदर कुछ तो सेंस होता ही होगा उस गाइडलाइंस के अंदर एटलीस्ट फॉलो वी फॉलो इट एटी परसेंट थिंग्स आर डेफिनेटली गो हमारी प्रॉब्लम होती है हमने प्रेजेंटेशन किया और प्रेजेंटेशन हम उसने बताया कि नाइनटी ट्यूबल प्रेगनेंसी क्या है तो वंदना जरूर बोलेगी सर्वाइकल प्रेगनेंसी और ओवेरियन प्रेगनेंसी के बारे में अरे भाई बोल रहे हैं कि ये ये आपकी ट्यूबल प्रेगनेंसी के लिए है आप ट्यूबल प्रेगनेंसी की रिस्ट्रिक्ट करो पर हम लोग उसके उसके बाहर सोचते वो हमारी प्रॉब्लम है वी इफ यू रिमेन विद इन द गाइडलाइंस वी विल नॉट नेवर फॉल्टर यू नो और थोड़ा बहुत जो आपकी सेफ्टी मार्जिन है यू कैन डेफिनेटली वर्क ऑन इट 
हमारे यहाँ पर विद इन पर्टिकुलर थ्री वीक्स फॉलो अप आफ्टर दी थिंग्स हैड कम लेस देन फाइव बिफोर यू नो दे बोर्डेड इन द प्लेन बिकॉज नेचुरली अब दोबारा प्रॉब्लम आने वाली है आने वाली है तो एयरलाइंस की बड़ी प्रॉब्लम हो रही है टिकट की प्रॉब्लम हो रही है सो बोथ ऑफ देम हैव गॉन बट दिस इज वॉट 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 नीड टू डू नेचुरली वहां पर भी जाएंगे तो डॉक्टर के फॉलो अप में तो रहेंगे रहने वाली है वो लोग सो आई आई थिंक यू नो आई एम एब्सोलूटली डिलाइटेड एंड वी आर हैप्पी विद मैन काइंड पीपल दैट यू नो देर जॉब एंड देर रिक्वेस्ट हैज बिन डन एंड वी आर वेरी हैप्पी दैट the people attended this particular workshop today had been 85 plus so i think a grand success ma'am aaj ka jo presentation hai i would like to give credit to dr jyoti bhaskar ma'am she only suggested that you take a topic the recent guidelines have come up which is very much uh, informative and should be brought out to the forum talk sab ek baat bilkul clear hai usi tarah se dr मैं मैं सोच रही थी कि रेनू ने उस 20 स्लाइड में ये लगाया बहुत अच्छा किया इसने ये किया वो ए, मैंने मैंने कहा जी मैन काइंड वाले मुझे थप्पड़ लगाएंगे डॉक्टर साहब की डॉक्टर साहब हमने ये स्लाइड दी वो तो प्रेजेंट नहीं किया वो तो स्लाइड प्रेजेंट करनी ही पड़ेगी आपको to uh, alter these slides so i did it dr jyoti master and dr minakshi both of them they helped me bilkul badhiya first class i think uh, bas ek presentation ek cheez aur chhut gayi jab bhi aapka presentation hota hai ek uske andar aata hide agar aap hide kar loge to wo jo blue chamak raha na wo bhi nahi chamkega theek hai that also you should and uh, the treat uh, for this successful meeting minakshi is that you are going to teach us how to uh, put a ppt on a phone and present okay and i did it on phone on i presented it also on phone so i think bahut hi badhiya bahut hi badhiya first class all of us need to know that google slides and what is uh, that i can have a session may again i'm i'm trying to repeat uh, what we are going to do on the 31st 31st high risk pregnancy every aspect must be covered in three presentations The only in one presentation, the threatened abortion के दो slide treatment के, दूसरे वाले presentation में threat recurrent abortion के और third presentation में आपके क्या नाम है luteal phase support के लिख दीजिएगा slide. If you put two slides and my job will be done, I will take care, you know, that they do not do check check. Okay, thank you, ma'am. All right, thank you, everybody. Okay, thank you so much. Thank you very much, Doctor Sima. You want to say something? No, ma'am. Just thanking everybody for joining the meeting, and we request also, you know, tomorrow is Sujit's uh, yeah, we'll ceremony. I think as many people uh, as possible okay. should uh, definitely go there. And uh, I, I think, you know, हमारे को पढ़ाई के अलावा बहुत सारी चीजें देखनी हैं. I repeat again, which I teach many times to Dorothy Bhaskar when I use whenever I motivate her to present society. Gentlemen will never